sucks because that ruins my week off of not talking, but I guess I have to live. Remember, remember, you are in control of this and can <laughs> say, hey, it's a holiday on the day we record. I could. You are allowed to do that if you would like. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, you remind me of that all the time. And then the I, little voice inside me that says, you're a failure. Uh, I keeps just, me, keeps me I just want to make sure that you don't get burnt out. What, what, people, what people don't understand is my motivation to do this show is not like me like soldiering on. It's me in my head constantly running from the voice yelling that I'm a failure. <laughs> it's completely fear-driven at all times. <laughs> time to get your fix. It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. It's not great. Horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Horrible Gaming Podcast. Hello, my name is Ed Cry with Old Man Gaming. You, dear listener, have chosen for whatever reason to listen to another Horrible Gaming Podcast. With me is... Neil A.K., a tiny wizard. And because if I don't say it, because I forgot to say it when I should have said it, gnomes will crawl into my ear sockets and eat my brain. I'm not alone. Usually I'm never alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got a show. Oh, OCT. <laughs> we, got a, we got a show for you today. Uh, but before we get into it, we got to thank the people who have made this show possible. Behind our ugly mugs, you're seeing a custom graphic. That was provided by Mr. Mark Bell. We thank him for that. And then, of course, this show's music and all the theme music here at Old Man Gaming is provided by the man who makes the music, my brother, Nick Van Siders. We thank him for that. We're going to be right back with everybody's favorite fan traction. Horrible Gaming Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our first segment. Our most important segment, that is fan interaction. That's where we, the co-hosts, we talk to you guys, the fans. We read out your comments in all the places we find them. Riff about them. We talk about them. Uh, yeah. We did throw out a challenge last week. Well, not a challenge. We An offer to William Hoenn. No, to the give, gauntlet. Give us, a, give us a topic for this week uh, since he is uh, on strike um, and kind of walking around. And hopefully, hopefully we're entertaining him. Hopefully we're still entertaining him, but he did not comment this week, uh, which is totally fine. But, Will, I'm saying it's open-ended. So if you're still on strike next week and you want to pick the topic, slap it in the comments. Just, uh, just slap it in. Instead, like a we, slice of ham. Just, <laughs> just slap just it. Just slap it. Just slap it in like wet meat. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we. Uh, uh, so instead, we're gonna do a topic that Neil came up with. I think is really interesting. I'll probably let him lead. But we're gonna talk about the uh, the new Final Fantasy remaster, but specifically the. Uh, the remasters in general, whether they're a good thing for the industry, a bad thing for the industry, stuff like that. As long as I'm saying that right, I'm I, that's that's basically the right Neil. I'm I'm on right. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, but first, of course, the fan traction, uh, mostly Jason. Uh, Jason Neil's head Neil's head lines up too much with the couch dude too frequently today, and it's distracting. <laughs> uh, looks like he's wearing a weird hat. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen Neil wear a weird hat, to be honest. In all not really life. a hat guy. Not, not a super hat guy. I I'm did have, I, I had one really, I've really only ever had like two hats. One was a DC ball cap that I would wear. And, uh, the other one was just an old work hat that I would basically have to wear all the time. The only one outside of that, that I ever really wore, uh, was the, uh, the one that I had for an outfit for a buddy's wedding who decided mm. to do a steam steampunk wedding is a, <laughs> a very large top hat. Nice. Uh, I am a hat guy, but I'm only a hat guy outside, which is interesting because like you would never. So like, so, like, if you watched me on here, you'd probably never recommend me on the street because I'm usually wearing a cabbie hat <laughs> of all the 
the hats that I wear. But is that the same hat, or you have multiple? <laughs> I have three different cabbie hats uh, of, of varying colors, thickness, and whatnot. I also have four different ball caps uh, that I wear at different times, and I still have a fedora, though I don't wear it anymore. Ah, uh, um, the old fedora. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that one. Remember, have it. I had. I had a fedora back in the day yeah. when I thought I was cool. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, there are definitely pictures of me on the internet in a fedora. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at uh, with hats. Uh, continuing, Jason. Not familiar with the Skyrim soundtrack. Jason, it's good. Trust me. I am going to good. endeavor, and I already started it. I'm endeavoring to make a Spotify playlist based on all the things we did on the last episode and put it on Discord. So, Ooh, so just, very just nice. watch out for I that like because that. that will definitely have Skyrim in it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and put all three, all six of our choices, plus all of our almost made it ins. Basically, my three and your one. Uh, so yeah, I think that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Um, then continuing, we've got Jace. Oh, oh, fucking buttons. Fuck, fucking buttons. What? <laughs> Don't just everybody hold on, and maybe this will end up being a being a rant in the uh, in the. Uh, oh no! In the beginning of the. Oh yeah, these. I, what happened? I, I just got a a mouse for gaming, and it's a nightmare. All right, continuing. Uh, honorable mention. <laughs> By Jason, uh, Zelda: Link's Awakening for Ballad of the Windfish. Honorable mention: mm. Silent Hill. Parentheses for the original Silent Hill theme. Then his top ten, starting with ten: Silent Hill three, nine, Chrono Trigger, eight, Silent Hill four, seven, Zelda: Skyward Sword, six, Lufia two, five, Zelda: Ocarina of Time, four, Castlevania: Symphony of the Night. Three, yes. Chrono Cross. Two, Silent Hill 2. And one, Final Fantasy 6. Did 10 because they're almost all a part of... Uh, they're all a part of one of three franchises. That's I fair. Castlevania was another one that almost made it on. And I will probably mm. add it to the Spotify playlist because Symphony of the Night is... It's just so good. It is so good. It's like the hard rock with the gothic sound. It's just... So good. Hard to not mention it. I I appreciate that that it gets a mention here. All of the Castlevania games have excellent music. Excellent and I music. like how that they can they can keep with the theming of like that, you know, basically like medieval setting, but right. still manage to throw other genres in there. And there's yeah. multiple other genres. Like the music for uh Lament of Innocence and uh yeah. Curse of Darkness on PS2, yeah. that those are really even good. phenomenal. Yeah, it's tough though, because like and I'm not throwing any shade to Castlevania by saying this, but like again, like my decider was like like I would have had like twenty soundtracks on this list if it was just my favorites. Oh, but, yeah. like, my decider for the three was Impact. You know what I mean? And, like, mm -hmm. I just... I love Castlevania Symphony of Night. I know a lot of people who say Castlevania Symphony of Night is the best. But I don't know how much Impact it had. And that's, maybe that's just me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I love it. It's amazing soundtrack. It definitely deserves to be mentioned with all of these. And kind of a travesty that neither one of us said it in our almosts. So it might, uh, uh, it might end up in the playlist. Ah! Jason then continued... We don't have capitalism in the U.S. anymore. We have post-capitalism <laughs> corporatocracy. I'm not yeah. going to disagree with that. Not even remotely going to disagree with it, nor am I going to touch it with a 10, 20-foot pole. Moving right along. Thank you for your comments, sir. <laughs> and then finally, Asylum66 posted a nice little link. Uh, it just said, thank me later. You guys have to go to our comment section and click on the link for it. And it's great. It is the Psycho Stick... Uh, Psycho Stick remake of Hearts Magic Man, but as Mega Man, it's great. It's definitely worth a watch. Me and Neil watched it right before we came on yeah. Asylum. I thank you for that, sir. So there you go. That's fan interaction. In a nutshell, knocked it out. Short nice, quick, and, and easy. Quick and easy. Gotta love it. We're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna get right back into 
or talking point. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right. So that brings us to our talking point, ladies and gentlemen. Now that I'm super mad at Neil, um, we can. Uh, <laughs> well, now you got to throw it in there no matter it's what. Be in because there then it's too nobody's funny. gonna know what just happened. If if anybody out there got wind that there was a two minute chunk of me yelling at you that I didn't put in the show, they would just be mad. Like we'd be lose hell. the viewers. It'd be whole hell. It'd be hell to pay. I mean, people want to see us fight more. Um, it's the age old rule. We don't fight enough. The age old rule. So, this topic is not my topic, it is Neil's topic, so I'm going to toss it right over to him. Neil, take it away, sir. So, uh, I, uh, I I picked up the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I've uh, been playing through that, enjoying it thoroughly. Uh, it's very much more, you know, more of that first game continued on. They're doing weird timey-wimey things with the story, but they went open world with this one, and they've added mm. a bunch of new stuff. Uh, like, there's a... Funny enough, the thing that I messaged you about was a uh, segment where they forced you to play the mini game that apparently people love in this called Queen's Blood. I've tried to avoid it, you know, like a plague because I'd like to play the actual game and not this mini card game on the side. But I've heard it's good. <laughs> but anyways, um, that you but, know, s- slight side digression. That was always my feeling of Gwent. People were like, play Gwent. Gwent's the reason. Yeah. I hate Gwent. I hate it. Uh, Hot take. Everybody out there who likes Gwent, go fuck yourself. I hate Gwent. I absolutely hate it. I hate it from start to finish, top to bottom. It's not a good card game. I fucking hate it. Okay, continue. If they, like, if they like peeled it off... <laughs> If they peeled it off on its own and made it like a mobile game, they did. Like, like, well, no, I mean, like this, this Queen's oh, this Blood, Queen's like they Blood, did with yeah. Gwent. That would be great. That'd okay. be great. I would absolutely investigate that, but that's not why I'm here. You know, that sort of situation. Um, right. But you know, uh, playing through this now, the the second of three parts of a remake of a game that came out in '97, I believe it was. Um, well, you know. There's been a lot of, like, remakes and re-releases of the games, uh, tons of different games uh, nowadays. And it makes me kind of wonder, like, is it always necessary to do this? Is it a good idea? Or is it sheer desperation in sometimes? Um, I know something like this, when you take a look at, like, OG Final Fantasy VII as a whole compared to this now like if you compare those two side by side they're entirely different games um it, it kind of makes a gives you a reason for a remake but then there are other remakes out there that are just like yeah it's the same thing but updated graphics and newer you know maybe it's something that is no longer available makes sense in that regard we get mm-hmm. things like uh the last of us the part one which is just a remake of og last of us where they remade like the graphics and cutscenes, but still kept the old voices in there for weird reasons i don't know i feel like remakes and remasters like kind of get this weird treatment and it's never like even keel it's just kind of serves a random temporary purpose or is meant to kind of bring in a whole nother audience. I don't know. Uh, what, what do you really feel about that? I got a lot of feelings on this. Because, uh, well, first, right off the bat, let's try and define what a remake and a remaster is, definition-wise. And I, I want, I'm want i going to say what I feel the difference is between the two, and then you just agree or disagree based mm-hmm. on that so that we can proceed from here. A remaster is where they take the content from the old game, like start to finish, they upgrade music, graphics, um, and like maybe control schemes or something, and put it out again on newer stuff. Whereas a remake is we take the content of the old game and we completely change uh, uh, core concepts of that game to make it almost like a new game from start to finish. Example of a remake, in my head, Resident Evil 2 remake is a remake versus like a remaster would be like the mass effect legend collection yes yeah yeah i'm definitely on the same page with that sort of stuff i want to make i want to make sure because i've had a lot of weird debates with people about it because like no one's really quite sure as to what is what um 
Well, that kind of, not to cut you off, but that kind of sure. gets at the crux of kind of what I'm you feeling about me this a sort of stuff. Cut offs, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of like the 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 crux of kind of what I was thinking about with this, because nobody knows. Like, I mean, I, I feel like there's a general consensus to where, for the most part, there are things that you can point at, and a lot of the times people will be able to tell if it's a remake or a remaster. But there are, like you said, a lot of different times too where well what is this exactly because they've only done half of the job or they've done more than you would think for a standard port with zhuzhin up the graphics you know yeah uh you know okay so remasters don't bother me that much unless they are like within like five ten years like the last of us remasters kind of bug me uh, because it was what a generation ago. What are we yep. doing? But comparatively, like you know, they're, they've already announced that there's going to be a Max Payne yep. trilogy remaster. That was a while ago. That was back on like PlayStation Two. Like, okay, I kind of see that. Bring that remaster my way. I would like to play that on the newer hardware with kind of better graphics and a better control. And I'd have, and also, you know, if you brought that forward, that was before the time of PC. So I really couldn't, you know, own that in its best form. You know what I mean? I have to go looking for it. I feel like those kind of things make more sense to me. When we get into the remake area, and I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. I'm not a fan of remakes. We've never really talked about this topic, which was one of the no, reasons that I when you so. put it forward, I was like, this is a good one because I actually have a lot of feelings on it. Feelings that I've never really discussed on the channel. I don't think i own or have played a remake ever interesting i'm trying to think of one and i'm having a hard time because i don't think i ever have um and there are some things about them and that that really irk me like let's take the resident evils right resident evil 2 remake resident evil 3 remake resident evil 4 remake right mm -hmm. they took the original game changed the core mechanics used the same storyline, edited some of the storyline, but overall same storyline, changed the core mechanics, remade the game, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't we make a new game? Can somebody explain that to me? Because when you're doing that, when you're doing that much work to it, you had to have new assets for that. You had to, have, you had to rebuild it from the ground up. You, it's not even like you're taking the game and just making it look prettier so it makes more sense. You're making a whole new game. You're making a whole new game, but you're trying to copy the original game. Why didn't you just make a new game? Why didn't you just make new IP or, hell, a sequel to Resident Evil? Instead, we get these weird remakes. And one of the things that bugs me about the remakes, too, is... And this could just be me. This could just be a hot take. I feel they devalue the original. Hmm. Now, now, if you said to me, if you said to me, Final Fantasy VII, let's say Final Fantasy VII, if, if you were like, I want to show my kid Final Fantasy VII, and somebody was like, well, we'll take Final Fantasy VII, we'll make it available on newer consoles with better graphics. Great. But now you're saying, no, we're going to take Final Fantasy VII, we're going to remake the game so it's kind of a different game, so that when your kid gets to experience, it's a completely different thing than what you experienced. It devalues it. It devalues what it originally was. And I've talked about this before on the, on the channel. One of the big reasons I don't read comics anymore is because the movie industry got to them, and every time a movie came out, that character would restart their comic book. It was nothing, never so worse as Marvel. Marvel would have like 30 comic runs and then have another number one. You know, so it would be like, there'd be a new number one every six months for like Captain America. There was no value to the number ones anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's no value to the original at all. And that's something that bugs me about these remakes. And one of the things that like, a lot of people are always like, like I think, uh, I think there was one year that uh, one of the Resident Evil, uh, maybe it was this year that Resident Evil Four was snubbed, the remake or whatever. People were like, it should be on there, and mm -hmm. it's not. No, it shouldn't. 
It's not a. It's not an original game. They they copied a bunch of shit that somebody else came up with, and then made it look made it fancier and different. Like it, it shouldn't be there. The original one should have been there. This one shouldn't. You would never nominate a remaster for, for game of the year. Like that kind of stuff. Like. It just devalues that original one. If they can be considered completely new games, why aren't we just making new games? It's not like we don't have room for new games. And that's another thing, too. When you get into the movie industry, so many movies come out a year, right? Mm. Like, and I'm talking blockbuster, because hundreds of thousands of games come out a year. I'm not talking about single A's, double A's. I'm talking about the blockbusters, right? There's not that many AAA games out there. Why aren't you just making a new AAA game? I don't understand why we're taking the time and the resources to copy a game that's already happened, that's already done. You know, I, I would be more okay with it if the original designer of a game was like, I didn't have the technology available to me when I first made this original game. That's why I want to go back to it and make the game again in the original way that I want to make it. Okay, I could kind of see an argument for that. But usually it's not that. Usually it's really big companies taking IP that they don't know how to properly work with and then, how, well, how do we make money on this? Make the good one again. And it's just a cop-out to me. You know, uh, this is, I think this is kind of a very unique sort of situation because I think this is the first time that you and I have been on opposite sides of the fence, but I, something that you have said to me kind of resonates more so in a way of, okay, I won't say that I completely I you? changed I my tune, you but I, I can see it yes. from that angle Come because here's here's Do it. here's Do it. here's what <laughs> Do it. Do Do it. It. Um, still got the horses. Here's, so here's the point that you got me. <laughs> here's the point that you got me. The point that you got me was uh, my point to you was going to be um, the original vision. The okay. original vision, you know, you can only convey so much with, be it beeps and yeah. boops or polygons yeah. or, you know, now in our current day and age, something like, you know, the Resident Evil remakes, if that's what the, it was, was they came out and said, hey, we want to do these justice because right. now we have the technology and the ability to do what we originally imagined. Right. So we want to do that. If they came out and said, I don't. Like all of you, uh, I, I would have been like, all of your arguments are invalid. A remake has a reason to be there, but that's the thing is I, I even had this thought in my own head while you were doing that. The whole reason the res, uh, no, resident evil, the final fantasy seven remake series is even happening was long ago back on PS3. Yeah. They did a tech demo, tech demo showing that the remake of the intro of final fantasy seven. Now, there was never any plans to do anything with Final Fantasy VII. They've never done a remake of a Final Fantasy. Hell, at that point, uh, actually, at that point, they had ne never even done, well, no, they did sequels to Final Fantasy X and X-2 on the PS2. Right. So they did sequels in that regard. But outside of that, usually it's a one-and-done thing moving on to the next. Pause. But, gotcha. Keep, keep that. But what ended up happening is they saw the reception. They said, you know what? Fucking that. We're going to print money. That's what it's going to be. And that's exactly what ended up happening. Eventually, uh, you know, they, they kind of toss it around and started and restarted development a couple times on the first and the, the final fantasy seven remake part of it. But in the end it came out was pretty successful, but they decided to, come up with a reason to justify the remake which i think was a good move on their part because that then when i think about it swings my thought my my like train of thought back around to well maybe their reasons were not necessarily you know the greatest or most pure so to speak uh, for doing the right. remake, but in the end, they turned it around to have another reason outside of their initial "Hey, money." 
yeah. to go ahead and do it because I mean, it's, it's doing very well. I mean, they've committed enough to it to basically stretch one single game into three entire games in parts, uh, telling one single cohesive story. Um, but again, that's one of the things that kind of bothers me is mm -hmm. it's even with you diverging, like, first of all, I know that the story diverges from its yeah. original. But at the same time, you're still retreading when you don't have to. You've you've completely designed a completely new game from the ground up uh, mm. to use characters that's already been used and then to change their storyline and their canon. I don't necessarily like that. I don't I don't take time. I don't spend money on what ifs, I guess, is the is the best way to say it. I just don't. I don't I'm not gonna drop seventy dollars on a what if storyline. And that's what this is. This is a two game long what if storyline that the other thing is, and let me prove my point with hypocrisy, uh, because, uh, Excellent. <laughs> because there is one remake that I'm very interested to get. I have not gotten it yet, but it is a remake and I'm very interested. In, and that is Contra Operation Gal uh, Galuga. Okay. Uh, Operation yeah. Galuga is the original Contra mission. All right. The original Contra mission. So this game covers that storyline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> the original Contra mission was on the Nintendo Entertainment System. There was no voiceover. There was no talking. The story was told only with context and barely that. It was hard to understand what was going on most of the time. Like, and that was what, 40 years ago? Uh, not quite, but somewhere in that vicinity. Almost. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's a remake that, okay, I would consider that. You've taken the original story, like you've actually told the original story when it couldn't be told in the original game. If you told me we're remaking Mega Man, oh, I might get on board for that. But like, you're not. You're remaking games that we all saw the story for, that were new enough that we've already experienced these characters in the story. You're just building a whole new game. And instead of letting us just experience the story that we know and love from the original, which is why I'm I'm kind of okay with remasters. Now, before everybody jumps on my nuts about saying that, I don't love how much these companies use remasters to make quick bucks, okay? Like, because mm -hmm. it seems like every one of these shows that we see, these online trailer shows, gets like three or four remasters nowadays, I don't like that. I think that's bullshit. I'm I'm not saying it's not. They are very obviously being like, hey, if we made this sound better, we could release it for another $70 game. You know, mm -hmm. Last of Us was completely shameful, and Naughty Dog should be ashamed of itself for that. That being mm -hmm. said, there are remasters, there are games that I would love to see just take the con Sukiden remastered. I'm still waiting for, and I'm going to be a day one player of that 100% when the Sukiden remaster, when the Sukiden trilogy remaster comes out. I'm going to be there because that game was a seminal game for me. It was a PlayStation One game, so it can use the updates, you know, putting it all together. I like that stuff. Same with Max Payne. I think Max Payne can will be value from a remaster. We don't need to remake it though. We don't even remake it. We don't even remake either one of them. Just take the original quant content that we had, take a look at it, be like, what could we do to make it slightly more playable now? Do that and put it out and I'm happy. Put it out as a discounted price though, but put it out and I'm happy. I think that when you get into these remake territories, you end up with this like lack of creativity. And what bothers me so much is... You look at these remakes too, and I've watched people play these remakes. I take, I don't know if you guys know this, but I take this show very seriously, probably more seriously than I should take it, which is why we've had to change the fucking formula of it so many times because <laughs> I get burnt out taking this seriously. When I go to the bathroom, I look at IGN. The minute an ad comes on my TV, I look at IGN. I am not looking at IGN because I'm excited to. I'm looking at IGN because I'm trying to find content for this show, trying to keep up on the thing that I promised I would do for all of you people out there. So I take this show very seriously. I kind of lost my thread there for a second. 
<laughs> I'm like, shit, I'm thinking about the show. When I'm watching other <laughs> shit, I'm thinking about the show. I did. I forgot what. I was trying to make a point. And I, I don't know. what. Oh, was that it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I watch these games. So I watch these games. So if I don't play the game, I watch the game, right? I experience the game in some way, shape, or form so that I can at least talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. These games are really well made. They have new mechanics. They have new builds. Some fuck. I would say Final Fantasy VII brought a new and interesting combat system to the potential JRPG genre that almost every one of those games should adopt, and a lot of them have started adopting. Yeah. But to me, that's defeated. That's just a little bit valued less because you're using it to reskin an old game instead of. A new game. Like, that's game of the year possibility that you have stifled because it's just another Cloud Strife what if. And that's the problem here to me is that you have, you're wasting good ideas on things that have already been done and accomplished. These aren't ideas that people had and weren't able to do back in the day when they were making these games. It wasn't the original creative vision for these ideas. No, 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 no. They made the game they wanted to make. And now, 2024, you're taking those games and taking all of these new ideas that could be put into new games, new IPs, new sequels, for that matter, and you're wasting them on on stuff that already exists. You know? That house is built. You don't need to put anything more on that house. Build a new house with your new ideas. Does that make sense? Yeah, now I will say too, like I think like there there is a little bit of that there for me too. Like the age of a game kind of definitely yeah. matters. Uh, kind of to get back to the Last of Us thing that you had mentioned. Uh, it's actually been <laughs> there was the Last of Us on PS3, right? Then they did the port, yep. the HD port to PS4, and then yep. the remake on the PS5 with mm-hmm. Last of Us Part 1. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, that that was That's why I said not, they should be a not great. themselves. Um, but there's some games out there like I think it comes down to how long it has been since there's like been an entry or since that game came out what it can bring to the table and if that game is still available somewhere else. Right. Let's take a game like Symphony of the Night. Yeah. Symphony of the Night is an excellent standalone game, still holds up to this day. The, basically, uh, Hollow Knight is like a one-to-one copy, yep. effectively, in a lot of, of that, uh, in a lot of ways. Um, so that game doesn't necessarily need a port or anything like that because you can still get it even on like my – I have it downloaded on my phone. Mm-hmm. I can play it on my phone whenever I'd like. Yeah. That also said, uh, while I'm like, nah, we don't want it, and we don't need it, I wouldn't say want it, because if they <coughs> today came out and said, we are going to completely rebuild Symphony of the Night as a 3D open world uh, like dungeon crawler or something like that, same exact everything, but completely flip the format, I would then be interested in that. I would, I would not, then 100%, 100% be interested to see how that turns out. I would not. I mean, I'd be interested to see how it turns out, out from an experimental sort of thing. But as far as me and my consumption of content, it would immediately mm-hmm. put me off. Because it's like, why aren't we just doing a new entry to Castlevania with an open world model? Why are Which we building is... off the shit that we already have? Like Castle, and And the other thing is, too. No matter what happens with this hypothetical 3D Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you you hurt the original one. You hurt it a little bit because if it's amazing, then then people stop playing the original one that is a 10 out of 10 in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And if it's not great, then people will view that 10 out of 10 just a little bit less good. Like no matter what, you dilute the original content. And that's the problem there. Like, it would be one thing if they came out and they were said, we're going to take the, and you can get it everywhere, but they were like, we're going to take the original Castlevania 
and we are going to make it prettier, remaster it, make other music sound, maybe add a couple new playable characters, and put that out as a remaster. I would be more interested in that than I would be in a remake. Because the remake, again, it's you're take you're wasting new ideas on something that's already beautiful, that does not need to be touched or changed in any way, shape, or form. I do suppose that was a uh, a bad example because there hasn't been a new Castlevania in a multitude of years. <laughs> right. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I think it I would think be it a little bit more of a slap. I, 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 it would be a little bit more of a slap in the face yeah. if they were like, hey, y'all like <laughs> Symphony of the Night, right? So we That's, haven't made one of those dude. in like decades. Let's just go ahead and give you, you know. I think uh, it holds Symphony up because that's Castlevania. all Castlevania does. That's all Konami does is release well, remasters. That's, yeah, like, that's here's another been... collection. <laughs> no, well, that's and that's the thing is like in my in my head canon with that sort of stuff. Like the uh, the Castlevania collections that they released. There there have been like I think two separate Castlevania collections that have yeah. come out uh, for modern systems. Um, those like those don't count. Those aren't games. Those are just, hey, we're collecting everything all in one go and regurgitating it to you in this package. But kind of spinning off from there, I feel like there's a more egregious, sick uh, new practice that kind of is in that same line um, that really sours everything for Mm. me with remakes and remasters. And that is the delisting of games that are available anywhere else, these older versions of games, to then Mm -hmm. force us to buy a remaster collection. They've done it with so many different games now. And every single time, it turns out like whole hot garbage. Whole hot garbage. It's it's just them trying to make money strictly on nostalgia. I feel like with a remake, you at least bring something to the table in that, okay, you know this thing, you know you like this thing, and without saying it out loud, they're like, we know you like this thing. Let's give you a reason to pick it up. That, for me, is why I'm okay with remakes, but a remaster, you really have to bring something to the table for me to really want, um, to like really want and need. Even something like the uh, that Sonic Origins collection. Mm-hmm. The only real reason I picked it up, uh, truthfully, was kind of dumb. Because you're a cuck for Sonic. End. I love well, you to I mean, death, but well, you're a cuck for Sonic. There if is if that, it's got Sonic uh, on it, you're going to own it at some point. That's that. Uh, that is fair. I will not fight you on that <laughs> point. Um, but the whole thing was, hey, so we're going to take Sonic uh, 1 through 3 and Knuckles and CD, and we're going to put it together in a single cohesive story. So where you can start at Sonic 1 and play through the games and tell it in a certain way to make it all be one big single story. That's cool. That intrigued me. That really intrigued me. And I, of course, like a fool, did no sort of research as to uh, uh, what that exactly entailed. I didn't really pull it off from what I understand. <laughs> no. So all it is is a at the beginning of each game and at the end of each game, there is a uh, like 20 to 30 second animated cutscene that uh that plays that kind of gets sonic going from the end of what he just did towards the next thing um that is not worth the 40 dollars that that game launched at it was barely worth the 15 that i paid the only reason i really paid it is because again cuck for sonic um, but I don't, <laughs> I, I don't have Confirmed. those games on the switch. I don't have those games on the switch. So I was like, I, I want to be able to cart those around with me. Fine. That's fair. I'll give you 15 bucks for it. That's fine by me. Cause there are some, you know, remasters that I'm always going to buy. I've bought a Sonic collection four different times across multiple systems, five different times, you know, yeah, you, you, no shame. I'm a cuck for Skyrim. So 
I bought that game three different times. <laughs> so I don't even, yeah. Uh, and I get that, it. I get it. Well, you know, it's it's funny too because even Skyrim is yeah. one of those things mm. that when we look at it, it's it eh. is slowly approached that remaster territory. Every five years, basically, we get a remaster of it. Yeah, it's like a slow roll on it because yeah. you know you have the original game come out, then you have uh, your your DLCs, and then mm-hmm. you have the collection that's got everything all yep. together. Okay, fine. Then they have the, the an- next they, gen. They, next gen version and then they have the anniversary version which by the way now you can fish in a whole new thing i got that one i can fish in my skyrim i'm a fucking cuck for skyrim i fish like it's not that good but i fish in skyrim it's oh yeah that's and that's the thing is i i have not (laughs) purchased it since uh we got the legendary edition the uh xbox one (laughs) you know what's the most funny about it is that anniversary collection everything that makes it cool like even the fishing is all community creations like that's what it was was they took the the modders and they were yeah. like do you want to make some money off this and they took the most popular mods and just added them to the game as dlc for you to buy with the anniversary uh which i'm gonna say right now there's some really good content in there but it's it's all just randos on the internet which i i think is hysterical to me well, and then you kind of go into something that uh, I didn't I didn't actually put on my list for newsy bits, but has been floating around for a while. The uh, Star Wars Battlefront collection. Yeah, that's, that's been coming. So that mm-hmm. is that is falls within this realm of the uh, remaster collection altogether remaster toss it in there but there's been so many issues and bs surrounding basically um i mean there, there's been mul- a multitude of different things but the one real big thing that kind of sticks out for me in this topic of conversation is they effectively stole mod content and packaged it in the main deal for yeah. the game itself yeah. and the creator's like uh hey guys you kind of took my stuff and they started like oh uh-uh, no 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 we, we didn't do that no 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 Bombs. and he's got like lots of evidence to prove otherwise there's extra stuff in those games that they themselves didn't even do it's just other fan created yep. mod content you know yeah and, and, you you also have the one um whatever the fuck's going on with world of warcraft that the og world of warcraft that they did oh uh, remember that shit where they were like world of warcraft one reforged or Re- was it reforged i don't know reforged. what it was but they were like so there's two world of warcrafts now one of them is the original warcraft that they started all over from beginning and then the other one is where the actual world of warcraft is now content wise i'm like yeah. i this is insanity right now. You are just, you're asking for some canonical psychotic shit to happen there. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's there's not a whole lot more to talk about to, on this. I do want to say, for me, yes, they do some evil shit with remasters and remakes for that matter. I think with a, rem- with a remake to get me interested, it's got to be like, you're taking something that that either I can't get to or just wasn't made with the technology we have now and Mm -hmm. updating it in some way to bring it here to me now, you know, like the Contra, like, you know, stuff like that, uh, with a remake, but a remake, I'm just never going to get as excited for a remake as like some people have speculated that the remasters for Max Payne are actually going to be remakes. I will be more upset if they're remakes than if they're remasters. I, I really will be because, again, we're wasting... Like, why not just make Max Payne 5 at that point? You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing? I'm sorry, Max Payne 4. Like, what are we doing? Like, why waste those ideas on those old games? Uh, those games are already good. Leave the games as they are. That's just my feeling on it. Um, yeah. I would, I would say just to kind of, like, cap it off, like to your point uh in this conversation i was kind of floating more towards uh metroid dread Mm. so you know we had metroid fusion effectively metroid 4 was the last mainline numbered metroid game in the series uh all the way back on the game boy advance and then they were going to be making metroid dread which eventually came out of development hell but 
I can see a world where Metroid Dread was a remake of Metroid Fusion. Yeah, or even just Metroid One. They could or that even shit. well, they well that's the thing. They've already done that. Oh, they, they did? already did that. Yes, on Game Boy Advance, Metroid Zero Mission is a complete remake of the first Metroid, basically bringing it in line with kind of how it looked and felt and played in. Uh, well, and again, that uh, almost seems like an Operation Galaga stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and it, it really and it really is like if you if I did not know the story of the first Metroid game and somebody handed me Metroid Zero Mission. You was know. like, here, play this. There's a brand new Metroid game out. Oh, hot shit. This is cool as hell because it, it completely changes like everything of it. But right. then that's that's where we really kind of get boiled down with that stuff and the Metroid Fusion and Metroid Dread stuff. Mm. It, it makes you wonder like like where where the line yeah. is, what like what is OK and what is not? What do you actually like? What do you not like? What like what is the line that you don't want somebody to cross? Yeah, because I can see myself buying a Metroid Fusion remake because yeah. Metroid Fusion is amazing. But if we did that, we never would have got Metroid Dread, which is it, it, it was Metroid five. So, I mean, it's the next step yeah. in that entire series. We would have never gotten it otherwise. Yeah. Same goes with like the Metroid zero mission. It's just a remake of a game that already exists, but it's changed so much that you would have never known if you yeah. hadn't known previously. Yeah. I think that, uh, I think that you're right. I think there's, there's definitely a weird, weird thing. Like the corporations are going to do this shit. Like it's easy money for them. To do a yeah. remaster, charge fifty dollars, or remake and charge seventy, and uh, they're gonna do it. Um, but I definitely have to draw the line at the remakes for the most part. You you'd have to do a lot to get me out of bed. But this has been an interesting topic. You ready to go to the news? Faux show. Horrible gaming podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our last segment, the news. That's where we collect headlines. Uh, don't necessarily deserve a talking point, or maybe we just want to keep it light. And uh, we just riff on them, tell you guys about them, keep you informed. Uh, we didn't do the thing that we usually do off uh, off Because we're screen. doing an entirely different thing. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, te I technically only have one. I have two here, but it's not real. It's just one really, really big one, and then that's it. I have four. So, Why don't you start uh, us off then? Well, no, you know what? Let me just do, do mine. Do yours. And then maybe it'll take one off your list. Okay, so the, the big news, big news coming out of Larian is... Uh, 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 I heard about okay. this. It wasn't on the list, though. Oh, okay, good. Uh, and, you know, they had actually mentioned this when they first started making the game. Phil had pointed out to me when I told him about this. I think everybody just expected it anyway. But... Uh, there will be no BG3 DLC. There will be no BG4 from Larian. Uh, Baldur's Gate, I mean. Uh, and yeah, they're done. They're basically done with it. They are going to continue to patch it. They have a couple of cool little content ads. They said that they're right now they're finishing up um, more evil endings for evil players. Um, and then like more diverse evil endings for evil players. Um, and then some other patches and, and bug fixes. And the big one that they really want to get out there before they finish is mod support, uh, which, yes, amen to that. Um, and they have done a bunch of other things post-launch. Uh, they did the whole epilogue thing, uh, the final party epilogue, uh, which I'm positive Neil hasn't gotten to yet, so I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> but, no. but it's kind of like a, like a wrap-up of things. They tweaked some of the endings, which was really nice. Uh, and then they, uh, they also, they, they updated like kissing models and stuff like that for romantic scenes. Uh, so they've done some post stuff other than just fixes, but they said they're, they've got some patches coming. They've got a few little content updates, but there will be no official downloadable content, like full size downloadable content. And there will be no Borderlands 4. They are done with Dungeons and Dragons. They're moving on to their own IP again. Um, which is interesting. I mean, this is big news in my opinion. Even if they said it back in the beginning, this is huge because like Larian is the the people right now. So you gotta wonder. 
uh, what they're doing. And before I hand this over to Neil, I do want to also point out to everybody, and not everybody realizes this, as much money as Baldur's Gate 3 has made, they had to pay an absurd amount of money to Wizards of the Coast to even make it. A lot of people are like, oh, Wizards of the Coast paid them to make their game. That's not what happened. No, Larian, it's literally the opposite. <laughs> Larry literally <laughs> bought the rights to make Baldur's Gate 3 from Wilder, Wizards of the Coast, and Wizards of the Coast is still going to make money off that game in per perpetuity. So there has to be... I, I can't imagine that that didn't go into it, where they're like, you know what? We hit the money on this one. We hit the nail on the head. Everybody knows our fucking name. We're a household, we're a household name, a household brand as far as video games go. Let's do our own content that we don't have to pay for, uh, and everybody will come to us now because of what we did on BG Three. Yes, in fact, uh, you you know this because we've talked briefly about this. I bought Divinity Two. Yeah, just so because, I. just yeah. because of Baldur's yeah, Gate. 3. So did I. Um, the only reason I per picked that game up, I had heard the name Larian, but, but I couldn't tell you a single thing they did beforehand. Uh, to to your point, and probably to what they're, I'm sure, planning. Uh, you know, they don't need D and D anymore. They don't necessarily need it. Uh, I think it is a. It's definitely they have strong wills over there because uh, Kayla actually was the one who, funny enough, I hadn't picked up on this uh, uh, at all. Kayla was one to talk to me about this previously, like a night or two ago, because um, they were like working on DLC and everything and nobody was about it. Like the passion yeah. was gone. And that was actually my fake second one was oh, what okay. you're saying right now. So in yeah. a weird way, you're stealing my second one here. But Stealing the second one that didn't yeah. exist. I mean, uh, it did. I just well, forgot yeah. to talk about it in my opening thing. Yeah. So, and that's, that's the thing is, like, they had the will to say, hey, this is something that we know is going to make money. Guaranteed that DLC would have made money. Hell, I would have bought it mm -hmm. one way or another. I usually wait on DLCs whenever they come out. I would have bought that same fucking day. Um, but they said our hearts aren't in it. Plus, like you kind of mentioned, they definitely said that Baldur's Gate 3 took a lot of their time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're going to not be stuck doing that for literally ever. Yeah. Good on good on them. Good I, on them for making the hard choice leaving you know doing effectively the uh effectively doing the their logan <laughs> even though <laughs> even though hugh jackman's coming back again for logan one more time but we won't we won't talk about that um <laughs> and saying hey i want to go out on a high note with this this is what we have presented to you this is the game they're going to patch it just to be the best version of what they wanted to present and no more than that, that's admirable at this point. You know, um, okay, so I have mixed feelings on it because there is there is a lizard brain part of me that's like, Larry, and must make more. <laughs> more. Battles get three. I must, I must have more content for Battles get three. I want my characters to do more in Battles get three. So there's definitely that, right? Um, but that being said, one of the things I said back in Tears of the Kingdom before they said that there was no DLC is I said I might have been more okay with their $70 price change if they had said ahead of time that they weren't going to do any DLC and that this was just the contained product. Mm -hmm. I do, there is something truly wonderful about this day and age, a company going, this is the game, we sold you the game, we put the price tag on the game that we wanted on the game, and you purchase the game, and we're done. We sold you the product. There's no caveats. There's no if or ands. There's no fine print. There's no down the roads. This is the game. We're going to do our best to fix it until we think it's in a good spot, and then we're going to move on to something else. And there, there is something really beautiful about that. Um, 
that I that I do enjoy, that I do love. Uh, I I I also do respect the choice to be like, we started working on this thing. We don't think it's gonna be good, so we're not going to make it. And you know, in the last couple of weeks, we talked a lot about like what the game industry is doing, how they're doing it, and uh, one of the big things I've said is that somewhere along the line video game companies forgot that they're supposed to be selling you a product, not just taking your money, selling you a thing. Larian didn't forget that. They made a product, they had another product that they didn't like, they scrapped it, and they sold you just the product that you want. And now they're gonna move on to a product that they can make and put quality into. And I'm gonna tell you this, I may buy the next Larian thing, even if I'm not interested in it, just to support that mindset, you know? Mm -hmm. And if they had made a DLC for Battle's Gate 3, I would have been super excited for it. Super excited for it. That being said, them choosing not to, it's respectable. And I'm totally okay with it. That's Absolutely. my only one. You're up, man. It's all you from here on out. Alrighty. So, uh... Oh, boy. Um, so, okay, we'll start up here. Because uh, we're, we're all over the place on this. Um, so... Sony is suspending the production of the PSVR 2. Uh, why is that? Because they can't fucking sell the ones that they made. Shocker. Really? An accessory to a console that costs the same amount as a console not selling with really no games to support it? I could never. <laughs> could never imagine something like that happening. Insanity. Um, now they claim that uh, this is not all doom and gloom. It's more so because they want to test PC functionality to see if it's something that they can implement onto PCs. So that way, instead of buying like a Vive or something like that, you can just get yourself a PSVR headset and just plug it into your computer. Um, fine. Uh, but y'all should have known because the first PSVR did not sell well. It did not sell mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. at all. For them to uh, price it more expensive than the console the second time around, like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but like this no, is something that's... that we have been talking about for a while now, that Sony is completely and totally out of touch with their consumer base. And this is more of the same. This is more ignorant coulda not shoulda and they're just like oh the first one didn't sell well well the second one will fuck it and we're gonna make it super high priced like they don't listen to their people and it has put them in a position because as shitty of a company as xbox is they weaponize listening to us you know what i mean they listen to us mm -hmm. and they use it against us like sony like you actually need to take a page out of their book because this is not going to go well for you if you stop listening to your consumers. And they haven't been listening to us for a long time. Well, just because we're kind of dancing around with this Dance. here with Sony and uh, Sony and not making good choices. All right, uh, let's I'm do actually going to skip over to another one of these here. Uh, Sony has actually apparently views their acquisition of Bungie as a financial failure. What? Um, Yes, they are already basically considering their acquisition a financial failure. Not Bungie themselves, but they're not getting that return on investment that they're looking at. And more so on top of that, uh, there's one final uh, uh, Destiny 2 DLC that's going to be coming out. And then they're basically done developing for uh, Destiny 2. And there was actually recently uh, somebody who was speaking with somebody who works at Bungie. They remained anonymous, but they're apparently looking at the financial side of things. And this last DLC has to sell ungodly well, because with the current costs that they're running side by side with, uh, you know, their labor, like the labor and everything and what they have actually brought in as a whole, unless it's like the greatest selling DLC of all time, there is absolutely no way that uh, Bungie can get away with that aside from just dumping all of their staff. 
there's also already been rumors floating around too that uh uh what's it called uh marathon is actually being reworked it originally was supposed to be an extraction shooter and apparently now they're leaning more towards a hero shooter in the vein of overwatch oh that's great Uh, because overwatch is doing so good right now his overwatch is doing so well right now good god what are you Uh, thinking yeah so i'm very nervous for the folks over at bungie uh we've already had so many layoffs and we're only we're approaching the end of the third month of this year but we already beat the layoffs of the previous year by the end of i think it was the the middle or the end of february uh or january even actually now that i think about it it's just been dumping people left and right and we expected some sort of like course correction uh with hiring because you know let's face it they overhired during covid uh because everyone and their mother was gaming because they had free time and they rediscovered that old passion so there was a higher demand for it but the world is getting back to its normal ways now you know nobody has that time that they had before so things are just kind of sliding back more towards normalcy and as a result there were going to have to be people let go but i feel like between you know all the other publishers and then let let's face it uh the uh the microsoft activision blizzard acquisition they dumped all the people you know from that after they straight up said no we're not actually gonna do that we're not gonna do that after this deal goes through we're not gonna purge a bunch of people to make it you know reasonable for us to operate even though they uh basically they claim to have alluded that this was going to be a thing ahead of time um, but yeah, the, the poor folks over at Bungie just seemingly cannot catch a brick. I don't understand how they could think that Bungie isn't a good choice. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, there's no way Destiny has been alive this long and not making money, you know? Like, so what were they expecting? Were they expecting Bungie to just, like, make them all the money right away? And this this goes back to the just AAA companies not understanding what games of service is is really what it is and what it should be because you you coming you purchasing a company that makes money by drip basically and then saying what are we now a year into them owning them that they're a financial failure when they haven't even had a chance to really make right. it back like that that's what that company does is it makes money slowly like that's what games of service is it's a money drip and like, what were you expecting? The game is free to play. You pay for DLCs and cosmetics. Like, what were you expecting? I, oh, I, I gotta say, like, this is this is on this is a stupid thing for Sony. This is really stupid because you you, <sighs> I don't know, I don't know. It's so hard. You understand what I'm saying, right? Like, it's just yeah. it's it's mind numbingly dumb to think that like. Uh, to think that I, uh, I think what hap- my my guess as to what they thought was gonna happen was like you said, Destiny Two went free to play, so it goes free to play. They see live service. Sony's trying to make that pivot over to live service, not doing great on that, um, and they thought, hey, we see that Microsoft is buying everyone and their mother up. We're gonna buy up something that's made a bunch of money, and I think what they thought was going to happen was the money that they were seeing that it was making was still a residual from it being kind of at its sort of peak. Right. When there weren't as many live service games available as to like now, because that's, that's the one thing about a live service game. The one thing that I can't shake about a live service game is it basically demands to be the only thing that you play. So, there are more and more heavy time sync games out there that demand all of your attention. Mm -hmm. And as a result, people are going to jump from one to another one that they had that was their favorite no longer is, which is why they saw this growth trajectory and they said, Hey, it's going to keep going, but it didn't. And things like, don't work like that. Right. It's not more money, money go up, number go up, more money. Like, right. you know, it, it's something that's a balance. There's, it's something that's 
It has good times and bad times. You know, I could see if they consider it a financial failure right now, but I don't know. I, I I don't, I just really hope that we don't see, uh, we don't see Sony dissolving Bungie after this DLC comes out. Yeah. It would be a real, real, real shame if they did. And it would be one of the biggest mistakes of their lives i think that they should give bungie more time to make gold like they always have you know Mm -hmm. i mean can you name a bungie game that wasn't a hit uh i mean not not really so what are you doing and like what what are you doing they haven't even uh, you know even more to your point they haven't had a release since you bought them they haven't had a new release since you bought them at least let them put a game out do yeah, something like, first like seriously like i don't know very confusing very confusing uh so uh i guess a little bit of uh lighter news more positive news I like um, that. toys for bob the people who ended up making the crash and spyro remakes mm-hmm. are actually going independent from activision they were initially uh, a oh, part of the whole I Activision. Heard about this. They were. They I almost were put parent- this on my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were initially a part of uh, Activision Blizzard, effectively, because you know they are the guys that had you know Spyro and Crash, so they acquired Toys for Bob, uh, and then since they got moved over to Microsoft's ownership, effectively, they're like, "Nah, fam, we're good," and are peeling off away, and they're just going to be completely independent. Um, now, as for what it is that they are going to do, um, I would be hard pressed to see them putting anything out other than a uh, mascot platformer. Uh, but maybe <laughs> that's something that they need. Maybe that's something that they need. I mean, yeah, this is a weird one because they had the what was the one that they had? They actually had a versus game. Uh, yeah, the Crash the Bandicoot. Crash, uh, yeah, it, it, it's already shutting down yes yeah it's shutting down but uh well they said they'd leave it up and operational they're just not going to give you any more stuff basically uh like there won't be any more season passes or anything yeah oh god what was that called it's like oh i can't remember (sighs) i i yeah i i can't remember hero game um so there is some versus games of service possibility there too it it would be interesting to see what they do I will say, as far as mascot platformers go, there's not a whole lot out there that are doing anything right now. So that could not be really. something that, like, a niche they really find, a niche they really find. I mean, like, I mean, you've got the basics like Mario and Sonic, but can you really think of another one out there that's like really? I'll tell you one. Tell you one that needs to be that there's been appetite for is a Banjo Kazooie. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like that's one because they had, but you they know, got they, ukulele. Ukulele. Well, ukulele, you know, was born out of that was born out of, uh, you know, the desire for something like that. I right. almost I, I think it would be cool. I don't think this is exactly what would have happened, but I think it would have been cool if on the way out the door they were like, hey, we got all this uh, Spyro money rolling around. Microsoft slash rare. Can we have Banjo Kazooie? Mm. We'll give you money for that and we'll just do our own thing with it. I think that that would be cool as shit because that I, I could see them being primed for something like that. I got a hot take. I hate Banjo Kazooie. I hate it. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, I can, I can tell I can you why see. I hate it. I There's a very clear reason I hate it. And what it's is probably it? not what you're thinking. Whenever the characters talk, they make that terrible, like, <laughs> it drives me fucking nuts. It drives me up that. a goddamn wall. I hate it. I love it. that, I can't though. Stand it. I don't mind when some games do it, but for some reason in that game, it is so pronounced and so over the top and so obnoxious, it, it rots my brain. Whenever, like, other people are playing it, like, I'm like, no, I got to turn this off. Like, if I'm watching it, I'm like, no, I, I can't. I can't. I can't listen to Winnie Pooh deep throat tigger anymore i gotta move on i can't do this shit um yeah it's one of the biggest reasons i do not i do not like that game uh but still that would be interesting um 
I think they could do a lot with a lot of stuff, honestly. Oh, Make yeah. Make your own IP. I'd love a new IP. I'd play a new. Or even be known as the kind of on brand for what we've been talking about. Uh, be known as the remake people. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Like, that, that's that been kind of their thing. Yeah, uh, that's true. You know? That's true. Uh, so only one more. Okay. And uh, this one here I, I find a bit interesting uh, because it kind of falls within the same wheelhouse as what was done before. Uh, Margot Robbie is apparently producing a Sims movie. Really? Yes. Um, I feel like that it, it it's it's going to be very hard for the uh, for the Barbie comparisons to not be drawn uh, with that, given yeah. the whole idea around the Sims and everything like that. But I would find it very interesting because. You know, with Barbie, Barbie doesn't didn't have like a or like Barbie as a concept doesn't have like a story that right. you can like tell. They found one in the end. I wonder what story that they can find with The Sims because The Sims is just a life simulation game. There's no real story outside of, you know, the challenges that you, you know, that you give yourself or like the there there are some like storylines to some degree i have to tread very carefully how i'm uh, <laughs> talking about this uh, but i know i know of you know there are like storylines that have continued on from games yeah I, like, uh... I i'll i'll know i'll know when kayla listens to this episode i'll know for a fact the day that kayla listens to this episode <laughs> i think that uh the sims Stop making movies out of video games. Yeah. Why? Why? I don't want a Sims movie. What would that even be? Like, how would you even do that? Because it's I literally mean, just people who sometimes pee themselves. Like, I, I don't I don't understand how you make that story interesting. Because, uh, A, the only way I can think of doing it is the people outside the games are playing the yeah. games and somehow they're in it. But that's Lego did that. Lego did that a while ago, man, with Lego Movie. So, like, what are That's we... That's fair. Like, we've already... That concept has been explored quite a bit in movies lately. I don't... I mean, it, it, same with Barbie. There was plenty of concepts with that in Barbie as well. Like, we've already explored that people playing with toys and toys are alive concept. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know what we do with that movie. Why? Does, is Kayla excited about that movie? Uh, I... I pretty sure i told her about it uh but i can't remember <laughs> what her reaction was um i mean i'm sure i'm sure uh that she would be very excited for something like that and i'll be honest um i went into barbie skeptical whenever we went to go see it um i went into it very skeptical as to what it was that that movie was going to be in the end i was astounded with how much I enjoyed that movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I actually still quote it from time to time running around the house, <laughs> which is hilarious. So like, I don't know with, especially with Margot Robbie at the helm on something like this, that she's shown success with. Um, I, I don't know if Greta Gerwig's going to be attached to it uh, as well as like director. This is very early stages. I mean, I feel like those two partner up. Like I, I, I would say, yeah, I have hope for this movie. I don't know what they could do, but those two combined. I feel like again, those two, yeah, like that gives me hope, but that also gives me like fear because yeah. then you're just making Barbie, but you're making it Sims. Like, yeah. like how much, how, how different can you make the concepts at that point? You know? True. So I don't know. I don't know about that, man. I don't know that I'd be interested in that. I, I definitely don't want a Sims movie. I definitely don't want a Sims movie. I don't want the game movies that we're getting already. Like they're, we just keep getting more of them. And I'm like, I, no, please stop. Please stop. <laughs> you're hurting me. You're hurting me so bad. But that is uh, that, that is, is all I got. That's that all I got. Is it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do the plugs and we're gonna be done. Horrible gaming podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the show and the shameless self promotion that comes with it. Neil, would you like to plug anything, sir? 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we are still going through Ordo, uh, doing the, re the re recording on that. I have to say, uh, I believe I am now really starting to get a feel for how the game works, even though uh, <laughs> the last time we recorded, <laughs> I had a whole just freeze and had to just like stop doing what my character was doing to figure out what the fuck it was I was going to actually do. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, in, enjoying myself with that, I think we're starting to get our rhythm too, because I know with something like that, it's always like your first few episodes are like, okay, you're feeling out what your character is. You're getting a vibe for the setting and everything like that. And I think we're all, we're starting to get into the group. So I think we're we're starting to settle in. I think we're really about to rock it off here. So. Right, right, right. I I really enjoy the game. I'm very much looking forward to releasing it. I actually think it's gone smoother than most of the games that I've ever like play tested. I think it just it just works really well. That we did some mechanics in it with the investigation that I think was really fun personally for me. Uh, my favorite part. Like. My favorite part is watching or at least listening to Zach have an entire life crisis oh, about if people actually like oh, him because of his character. <laughs> to well, be which fair, has been, which has been be over fair. two episodes and nobody knows this. My character is awful. I played, I decided to make an awful character and then I immediately realized, Oh, this is going to be on the internet. It's not just us playing in a basement. So just everybody seems mad anytime I talk. <laughs> so, to be fair, I've done that before uh, GMing, basically, uh, to just a quick story. I, I had a whole, like, freak out mentally after this at one point. Uh, villain character that I was that was do going through a whole spiel, and this guy was, like, angry because the players were given a choice and they choose they chose to save other people that ended up killing this dude's family so like it was him having a whole meltdown freak out <laughs> so i'm doing like I'm, I'm starting to get into the meltdown freak out part of it and i'm like really <laughs> trying to sell it and then i'd like stop in the middle of it and i was just like realize how far i'm going it's like so what do you guys want to do and then i'm like in my head just like oh my god oh my god oh my god they thought I was just yelling at them. Oh my god! Oh my god! I really hope they still like. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely had those moments. Definitely had those moments for way worse stuff than yelling at people. My character is like a dirty piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's way worse. All right. Uh, so as far as me, we got a lot of content right now, guys. We got a lot of content on the TTRPG and video game side. Uh, you can check out all of that that it has to offer. We got shows basically daily on this channel uh whether you like ttrpgs or you like video games we are doing something for you uh so check it out other than that you can reach us on facebook at Omega gaming dh on twitter at Omega gaming 9 you can join our discord links in the description below influence this and all of our shows from there as long as you guys keep watching and listening we'll keep making them we'll see you guys next time i got a fucking gaming mouse and a gaming keyboard when i first got this okay. pc when i first built this pc i went cheap on the keyboards because who cares it's a mouse and keyboard right if it works it works right. so i got a 20 dollar logitech mouse and keyboard mm. all in one package 20 dollars. my wife has been on this thing called mac auctions oh uh, yeah I, I frequent mac yeah and if this makes the show people who are not in ohio it's basically like People who send back shit from Amazon to Amazon, Amazon doesn't just sell it on Amazon. They sell it to this warehouse that then auctions it off uh, called Mac Auctions. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try and get a gaming keyboard and mouse. Like, you know, upgrade my set. So I found one. I found one. And it has been nothing but headaches since I got <laughs> the damn thing. Does it light up? Sure. Do they look cool? Sure. Are they comfortable to hold? Sure. However, list of problems. Number one, they're not battery powered. They're freaking plug-in rechargeables. Ooh. It's terrible. It's terrible. I never know when they're going to die on me. And and granted, they really haven't died on me that much. But, like, I just want battery powered ones. Then, after that, there is this thing. And I'm going to show the people here. And, you know, you can, you know, just lie and say Use you the watch mind's it back. Eye. Right? There are these buttons right here on the side of the mouse. Everybody can see them. That button right there, that first button, it kills whatever website I'm on. I don't know why. 
I don't know why that's hotkey to that button, does but it, it is. <clears throat> does it look akin to this? Yes. On the side? I love those buttons. I use those buttons almost as much as my click buttons. I've never been so for, mad at you. For in, navigation, in fucking five it years is. of listening to you, I've never been so fucking mad at your dumb fucking face. That button is it's the worst. Great. It's It just kills websites. And I accidentally hit it all the time. And then I'm just not on the web page I was on. And I'm in the middle of saying something for a show. And then, You're on boom, the previous web page. Um, no, it's not. It kills the web page. I don't know what your fucking button does. Mine doesn't do that. It kills the web page. The web page is gone. Boom. Mine's a forward and backward button. So yeah, whenever I it's like, not a forward and backward button for me, Neil. Whenever I'm navigating anything, stop it. Even stop if it. it's read even the if goddamn it's a file hierarchy. Read even the if it's goddamn a file room hierarchy. I'll and just understand boop, boop. what's happening here and just be like, yes, Zach, that sucks for you. You fucking terrible dick. Jesus. Now I can't use this as the opening because I've sworn too much at you, and this is all your fault. I blame you oh, 100%. For all of the, for Start all of the to revenue finish. that we get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All those views, all those clicks, all those seven views, and we get a week.